Hello everyone, it's Lizzie here again. I hope you're doing well. This video is a follow-up on my previous one when we were questioning ourselves whether one needs a license to export a drone from Germany to Switzerland. Last time we stopped at the point when we identified applicable legislation. So in our case it was EU Council Regulation of 2009 dealing with export and other operations connected to dual use items. Now it's the time to unveil this big mystery, go through this legal text and hopefully find answers to all our initial questions. Okay, so the first thing that we will do is to identify the applicable rule. If we scroll our document a little bit down, we find Article 3 saying that an authorization shall be required for the export of a dual use items listed in Annex 1. So now let us go to this Annex 1 and see how this rule applies. So when we open um, Annex 1, we can see a lot of different definitions. And just out of curiosity, let's check out if there are words drones or UAVs in there. We didn't find the word drone, but we did find a word UAV, meaning any aircraft capable of initiating flight and sustaining controlled flight and navigation without human presence on board. This definition 100% corresponds to our case, which is super cool. So let's just copy paste it and search by keywords in other areas uh, of Annex 1. After our search, we found two classification number, two potential cases, 9A012 and 9A112. The meaning of this code, uh, I will explain you a little bit later. And to identify what code is exactly applicable in our case, we would need to read through the technical characteristics of our drone. So it can be the speed, distance, the endurance, or the payload capacity. Now that we studied the legal text, let us do the final analysis. So we have the rule saying that we need authorization if our item is listed in Annex 1. Our item is listed in Annex 1, so conclusion, we need an authorization. In order to obtain this authorization, a company should contact public authorities. But interesting thing is that we might have different cases. So case 1, it's a German company located in Germany. Case 2, it can be any other company located in Germany, let's say French company. So in case when it's a German company located in Germany, this company would need to contact German authorities. And in case when it's any other company, let's say French one, they will need to go and contact French authorities. On this note, we can proudly say that our case is solved. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you'll learn a little bit of new information. I'm just wishing you a very nice week. Stay healthy and see you in the next episode.